Blind swordsman, you say? Mm, I heard about him once. Now, for this blind swordsman, I will be giving some context and lore, so if you want to hear it, keep listening. If not, then go to the timestamp and the uh, video will start. In the world of Elden Ring, the blind swordsman was once a legendary warrior until a curse robbed him of his sight. Despite this, he remained determined, embarking on a journey across the troubled lands. Along the way, he mentors Melania, a skilled warrior, teaching her valuable lessons about courage and resilience. Together, they face the dangers of the Elden Ring, their bond serving as a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. Though blind, the swordsman's inner vision guides them both towards their destinies, highlighting the enduring strength of the human spirit. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. We first loaded up Elden Ring and begun making my blind swordsman. And of course taking the warrior class because that's the only armor I need for this whole playthrough so it makes my life easier. And to of course complete this build we will need a couple of items. Starting with obviously the warrior armor to show off what the swordsman was wearing, then receiving the blue dancer charm to show how the blind swordsman is very elegant and flows like water, along with the curved sword talisman because it resembles our swordsman and his appearance, as well as the prosthesis wear heirloom because it shows our heroic tail, and finally our blind swordsman's special unique flowing curved sword that has a water-like moving attack and it's a very strong dexterity weapon. Now, since I can't get the flowing curved sword immediately, cause it's all the way in the consecrated fields, which is very far into the game, I had to just rock with any curved sword I could find on my way. So that's what I was doing until then. I got her here. Okay, and we died. We started off by getting our horse torrent and then made our way over to get the bandit curved sword, which would be our first weapon to start with. This sword does have a drop percentage chance, but it was relatively easy to get and didn't take too long. We already got it, look at that! After getting the Dectus Medallion, the Radagon Sword Seal, and getting a couple runes to level up, I made my way over to Margit. Let's go, Mar- Mar- Margot. Now, I've played this game for a long time, and usually this guy is not hard, but I guess I was just too underleveled and was just being dumb. What? Did I die out? I don't- I'm gonna lose my shit! Finally, after a long series of events, I was able to kill him. Jesus. Soon after that, I made my way through Godric's castle and started to fight Godric immediately. It's one of these. Nice. Get another one. Alright, watch out. Come in. Boom, baby! Yeah! And right after Godric, I went to get the Curved Sword Talisman as it was a part of my build. And shortly after that, I was able to go get the Blue Dancer Charm from this cave in the Limgrave area after killing this big Titan guy, whatever he's called. And yeah. After Godric, I traveled to Luernia and tried to do some of the White Mask Varray challenges to eventually be able to get to the Blood area, having to face the starter boss again in order to do this. Thankfully I had plenty of armor, gear, flasks, whatever, and he was pretty easily taken down. Once done with all the quests and all that for White Mask Varray, I made it to the Blood area, and here was where I was going to get a ton of runes. Now, uh, let's keep this between us because this is a really good way to get runes. After leveling up, getting a bell bearing, and increasing my weapon damage and all that, I decided to kill a Erdtree avatar. No reason why. This guy doesn't really give me anything I want. I just, I wanted to kill him. And we ended up killing him pretty easily. Wanting a flowing like movement and all that, I decided to go get the sword dance Ash of War as it is very strong and it scales extremely good with dex. After gearing up a lot more, I was able to face the Red Wolf of Radagon and killed it pretty easily. 
I continue my way right after that to fight Raya Lucaria. Red, I forget her name. And I did have a bit of trouble dying at times, but in the end, I was finally able to kill her. We got it! We got her! Yeah! After all those bosses, I decided to chill out a little bit and decided to get some golden seed and the other half of the medallion, as well as gearing up and unlocking the Atlas Plateau, a whole new area for myself. Oh, and I think we can also add a charge to our flask. I got the whole plan. I got it written down, flawless. Going to keep looting, so I think it's just kind of... After getting a bunch of golden seeds and upping my flask usage, I made my way over to Mount Jelmir to get the Scavenger Curved Sword as it would be my next weapon, and it's a pretty strong upgrade. Once I got the talismans for my swordsman, I upgraded my weapon a little bit more and went to go fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Now, this fight was pretty tedious at times, and it took me a little bit to complete. I fucking knew it. I knew it. I Yes! With the Draconic Tree Sentinel now gone, I started making my way through Lendell and killed this weird avatar right here just because I wanted the rune and tried getting to first Elden Lord Godfrey as quick as I could. Wow, that's gotta be, oh my god, that was crazy. With Godfrey out of the way, I killed the Black Knife Assassin, got the Lost Sight of Grace, and was about to go and fight Morgoth, the second version of him. Except it didn't really end too well, and I had to give it a couple of tries before I eventually was able to kill him. Oh no, I- I don't know why I thought he was going to- I just got- HA! Oh, no way. No way! Yes! That out the way, I was able to make okay. my way to the Forbidden Lands and eventually the giant mountaintops. Once at the mountaintops, I made my way over to the snow castle and made my way through it to eventually get to Commander Nile, which should be a piece I'd have to get past in order to eventually get to Melania. And I was what quickly shown how hard this boss is. With seeing how hard this boss was, I decided to go get more runes and uh, let's get a montage going, I guess. Back at Castle Soul, I took a quick rest at the Lost Sight of Grace and went to go fight Commander Nile. And let me tell you, this fight took quite a while. Dude, I'm getting shit on by the knights, bro. Getting double teamed right now. What is this? Oh, I, my, my, my space. How? I dodged, I dodged, I dodged. What? I timed that shit per- No! Why did he do that one? And after too many attempts of this boss, I was finally able to do something. There we go. Yes! 
After defeating Commander Nile, I felt like the best person ever and decided to get the Halic Tree pieces as well as killing this guy real quick and made my way over to the Consecrated Snowfield. Then I embarked on the mission of killing the caravan guards and the giants to get my flowing curve sword. It will be the final sword and the only sword I'll ever need for the rest of this playthrough. Ooh, that's what we've been wanting. With our new weapons and gear, I was able to continue over to the fire giant and was getting ready to kill him. He took a couple of times, but in the end we were able to get him pretty easily. He just he just has a ton of health like that's always. It. That's it, baby! That's it! We were then able to commit a cardinal sin and get on with the next part of our journey. With huge progress being done, I got to crumbling Faramazula, made my way through it, and eventually got to the Godskin duo. Once in the Godskin duo fight, I quickly realized that they were way too strong, and I decided to get the last piece of my blind swordsman build, the prosthesis wearer heirloom. I had to very quickly kill Commander O'Neill and go talk with this guy at a church, then talk to this girl sitting up here and then do some other stuff and eventually I was able to get the prosthesis wear heirloom completing our swordsman build finally with a good chunk of grinding out of the way I was able to go and make a bunch of sleep pots and go back to the godskin duo and with our new sleeping pots we were able to kill godskin duo pretty easily I was super go. prepared and it overall wasn't really that bad allowing us to get our fourth bell bearing which increases our weapon to the max level before I went further, back at the snowfields, I went and completed the hidden puzzle to get to the Halic tree where Melania is. Now once I got to Melania's tree, I made my way through everything. It took quite a while, as well as I got some goodies along the way, but finally yes, I, got it. I was able to make it to the it. sewers where Melania was. Now I want to say for a good 8 to 12 or 10 to 12 hours, I was fighting Melania. It, this is ridiculous. This boss is too hard. Elden Ring, why would you do this to me? Ooh. What the? Okay. Oh my God. No. Stop! I couldn't move in time. God. I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. Oh, I went the wrong way. And then she kills me with the best attack. My, my keyboard got stuck. What the fuck? How did that get me? Oh my god. But finally, after countless hours and a lot of deaths that I did not put in, I finally was able to do it. Shortly after Melania, I continue my journey by going through the crumbling fair Missoula to eventually make my way to Malekith, but I had to deal with the Draconic Tree Sentinel right here real quick.
There we go. When it comes to Malekith, he honestly wasn't that bad. I died a couple <laughs> of times, but it took me only like three or four tries, and I was able to get him down. So yeah. Boom! We did it, baby. And I wanted to continue the boss train, so I went straight to Sir Gideon right after Malekith. And overall, he wasn't too bad, even though he was quite annoying with the spell spamming. But after a little bit, I was able to kill him. So yeah. These bosses were dropping like flies, so I just kept going. We only have two more bosses. Oh, I mean, technically three bosses, but yeah. Uh oh. We gotta chill out. We gotta chill out with that, man. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I didn't know there's another one. Boom! Coming down to the very end game, we have one boss left. Now, Radagon was a little bit tedious, but once I got the hang of it, we were able to work our magic. How am I? <laughs> I'm getting poopied on! What that gets you? What? So bright! Oh my god, look at the HP! Look at the HP! <laughs> we did it. God slay! And we beat Elden Ring. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, as it really helps me a lot. And so let's leave a comment. What was your favorite part of the video? Or let me know if you want any other video ideas or any other games. So yeah, I had a lot of fun making this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm.